The integral use of evidence-based data for decision-making and action-taking for effective humanitarian responses can make the difference between life and death. Day two of the Economic and Social Council's Humanitarian Affairs segment focused on working in partnership to strengthen coordination of humanitarian assistance in a changing world. This theme ignited insights and recommendations that spurred talks toward real progress. One of the absolutely key things that we have to do is to challenge ourselves to think about how we transform our system going forward. To do that, we need the best minds across the world to help us to do that. We can do some of it, but one of the crucial things uh, that you know when you have a global system is that you need people from the outside who are thinking the unthinkable, as it were, uh, who are able to think outside the box to bring those ideas uh, together. Open data is not only about creating efficiency, it's about increasing transparency and accountability. And I'd like to pause here and say that this is where governments have to make the decision because there is fear about this openness and, and of transpa transparency and accountability and, and also fear of what this information could where this information could land and who could use it for other reasons other than for development. Social media outlets such as Facebook and Twitter, along with widespread use of technology such as the cell phone, have integrated people on the streets who most often witness firsthand the effects of an earthquake or pro-democracy protest taking place outside their door. Before the Haiti earthquake in 2010, the attitude within the humanitarian space was more let's pretend social media does not exist. We don't know how to deal with it. We don't trust it. Um, let's just leave it aside and let's just do what we do and what we do well. Um, what Haiti demonstrated was that social media could be used to actually save lives in a way that we had never seen at that scale done before in a very public, very visible way. And countries are judged on macro performance over 20 years for MDG when they need to be judged on how they do on micro levels. We need to have the micro level and don't have any illusions about these social media for the poorest one billion in the world. They don't even have electricity, they don't have coverage. Would you like to invest in putting mosques there? That's very interesting. Should one, one invest in trying to improve coverage in those areas? Experts highlighted that political will, accountability and openness, along with working with the private sector to ensure the integration of new technologies, is the best way to get real traction, not only on an effective humanitarian response, but to build resilience and development across nations. We have to build on what's been happening here in uh, the United Nations this week, uh, where we've been talking about you know, the need for open data, uh, the importance of communicating more effectively, the importance of making sure that those people who are affected by crises are crucially at the heart of what we think about doing when we respond. It's a journey. Uh, it's a journey that I'm very excited to be a part of. I am thrilled that so many people around the world want to help us to think about how we can do better all the time. Deliberations uh, narrowed in on a common denominator. Governments, um, international organizations, the we, private we sector the and social media can work together to bring the world new change for good, if not for the better. ECOSOX Humanitarian Affairs segment runs through July 20th. The whole idea of open data and open governments is so that people can be included, so that everyone ultimately benefits. Afaf Kanja for South South News at the United Nations.